Now, now today, I want to focus on both married and unmarried people alike. Uh, uh, there are people. Let's not let's not play games with it. You are you are single, but you're seeking. You're, you're not settled. You, you're saying, okay, God, I, I understand that you've given me the gift of singleness, but I hope you take it back soon. <laughs> God, whenever you get ready, come get this. And there are, <laughs> there are other people who got married too fast and, and want God to figure out, trying to figure out how they can get out of it. There are people in here that are settled within themselves and this is the lot God has for me and I'm okay with it. Where, wherever you are, you, you, could be, you could be married with children, you could be married without children. There's a whole lot of things that can be happening amongst God's people today and we want to make sure we touch everybody. Today I want to deal with making a family. I want to deal with making a family. Now you can be a family of one, holding it down well. You could be a single parent family. You could be a blended family. You could be a two parent home family. Whatever, whatever type of family you are today, yes. I believe God's got a word for you. Amen. Uh, now, I know you see all of this stuff, and we're just going to use these props as a heuristic device uh, to illustrate making a family. I'm going to use making a cake like making a family. So I'm going to make a cake right here in front of you. And we're going to use making a cake like making a family. Say, teach, Pastor. Teach, Pastor. All right, all right, all right. Uh, families, relationships, as crazy as they may be, are still the backbone of society. And we have to recognize that there is an attack on it. There's an attack on the family. There's an attack trying to keep people from loving one another. There's, attack, there's an attack trying to keep uh, 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 people from finding each other. There's an attack trying to cause married people to break up and children to be disobedient and rebellious. There's, there's all sorts of attacks because, because if the church ever really gets it together and all of our families come together, we can have an impact. So the enemy certainly doesn't want families to be strong. So we want to deal with families. It's, 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 it's amazing how many broken homes we have to minister to. But I believe God's going to mend some today. Say amen. amen. So as we use this illustration about making a cake, I need you to walk with me through it, all right? Now, uh, the first thing we got to realize is that in our society today, most people want to use the microwave. People don't want to cook anymore. They want to use the microwave. We live in a microwave society. We want everything fast. We want everything now. I got to have it right this very moment. Now, as fast as you want everything to be, don't forget you serve the Ancient of Days. Have you ever, have you ever been waiting on God, wondering why he's moving slow? Hey, have you ever been asking God for something, saying, God, I need you to move quickly, but it seemed like he is in no particular rush? We live in a society that pushes us to have everything right now. And so even with cooking, uh, uh, we used to bake. We used to use the stove. Now everything comes microwavable, where we just want to open up the microwave, and we want to put our food in there, and we want to uh, close it up, and we want to push some buttons, and it better not take more than five minutes because that's just too long. <laughs> Six minutes, I can't wait that long. Five minutes is my max. And we get them, come on, don't act like that. We know we get them, them frozen dinners. And we open that box up, and we take it, and we read the instructions, and we poking holes in it. Because the instructions say so, then we put, it, we put it inside of there, and we put the numbers on there, and we close it up, and it say go for two minutes, and then you open it back up, you got to pull it back out, you got to turn it. You got to lift the cellophane up, you got to mix it a little bit, and then close it back up, and you put it back in the microwave, and you wait for another two and a half minutes. And then you open it back up, and you get it, and you take it, and you pull the cellophane back, and it's still nasty. You know it don't taste good. And here you are with all the salt and the sugar and the hot sauce, and you're trying to doctor it up, and you're trying to get it just right, and you're trying to make it edible. Some of us are trying to build families the microwave way. We want everything to happen immediately. We don't want to invest any time. Okay, I'm talking about single parent homes. I'm talking about blended families, especially blended families. We, we got a guy who comes into the household and all of a sudden now that you're here for a solid two weeks, you want everything to change around you. No, you got to invest 
some time. Those children don't know you. Matter of fact, they have every right not to know you because they think you're the man of the month. Because what you don't know is mama got a new man every month. They're just looking around to see how long you're going to last. We, we want a microwave. We want, we, want a, uh, we want our kids to be perfect day one. We want everything all the time, everything fast. We want it fast. Pastor, I want it now. I don't want to wait. So this microwave society that we live in is tainting our thoughts and understandings of how long and arduous it is to make something great. Then sometimes we move away from the microwave and we come to the box cake the box cake we want it just like the box shows us with minimal to no investment at all we just want to add water stir and have exactly what we want we, we don't want to do what it took to even make the mix we want someone else to do it and we want when it's done it better be Duncan Hines classic Classic yellow, deliciously highlight moist <laughs> cake mix. I mean, we want it to look just like this. And marketing, uh, they, they're great at marketing to make you think that this is exactly what you want. Well, what if I don't want this? Too bad. This is what you get. And the marketing of all of these products causes us to desire it even more. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm the worst of all. Uh, I tell Colfax, don't buy nothing without a good commercial. <laughs> she take me grocery shopping. I'm like, that don't have no good commercial. I don't have no kids on there smiling, happy because it tastes good. No, that's generic. That's say, that box say cake. I want the one that say, <laughs> I, if you don't have a good commercial, you are not getting my money. Amen. I, am, I bought in. Amen. Okay, so, so here it is. The presentation of perfection with no investment. You can have it all and don't put nothing in. You can have it all immediately. You don't have to sweat. You don't have to work. It is already done for you. No investment. Too many of us want box cakes families. The, the issue is, what if this is not the cake that fits me best? This is all it'll ever be. I suggest that we move away from microwave and boxes and customize. Somebody say customize. I think we ought to customize because one size does not fit all. I think we ought to customize because every family needs something different. And because of the way your family is constructed, because of the way you are, the way, the way you want things to be with your household, if I just do a box cake, no matter what I try to do to doctor this thing up, it's always going to be what it says. And it might not even be that good. Matter of fact, settling for box cake means settling for average. Sometimes less than average. But, 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 if we, if we make a decision to customize, we can have whatever we need. We don't need a cookie cutter family because you and I are different. So for what works for me in the White House might not work for the Jones House. What works for me in my house might not work uh, uh, for, for whatever, whatever your household is. It, it, it needs to be customized so that everything you need is present. Are y'all with me? Okay, so the first thing about making a cake is, well, let me get my little. <laughs> you, you need a clean water supply. You need, you need to spray everything down. You need to literally, you need to literally wash everything that's going to be a part of what you're trying to do needs to be washed. We are washed by the word of God. Are you trying to date somebody who has yet to be washed by his word? Are you trying to raise children and they are not being washed? How's your word life? Do you even know scriptures? 
Are you trying to get God to speak to you about whether or not this person you're supposed to spend the rest of your life with them and you don't even spend any time with him? You Are you washed by the word of God? Everything that's going to be a part of this family needs to be subject to the word needs to be subject to being watched by the way we are still praying for the people of Flint Michigan all of them still do not have clean water sources so just because the media is not talking about it anymore doesn't mean it's not a relevant story see the media talks about it when it's cool and when it's sexy but right now it's time for us to kick in and make sure your prayers are being heard in heaven about making sure people that look like you and I have clean water say amen to that Okay, back to my story. Here we go. Uh, uh, are you, somebody say, washed? washed. Whoever's going to be a part of this system, this family, make sure they're washed. It, it keeps away all contamination. You know the enemy's trying to come into your family, right? You know the enemy's trying to ruin everything you're trying to do. Are you using dirty utensils and mad? My question is, are you bathing your family in the word? Ephesians 5 and 6 says very, very plainly, it says, so that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word. Are you complaining about her but not washing her? Wow. Wow. Don't complain about her being contaminated if you're not applying enough word in your family that's causing your family to be cleansed. We are cleansed by the word of God. So before you start doing anything, you need to make sure all of your utensils have been washed in the word of God. Are you covered by the word? Make sure your family's covered by the word. Are your children covered by the word? Make sure your children are covered by the word because you, you're expecting them to be something that only the word can produce. So after you make sure your bowls and everything are clean and washed by the word, the next thing you got to do is you got to pick your flavor. Because every flavor is not the same. What are you trying to make? What are you are attempting to do? Because if you don't even have a vision for your family, how is your family going to become what, is, what you're trying to set out to make it? You got to be able to express the vision that God has given you for your family to make sure that your family becomes everything it should be. Okay, so if you're unmarried, uh, don't don't hook up with somebody that doesn't fit your style. Oh, absolutely! You need someone who fits your style. What, what do you What do you mean, Pastor? Well, we're all different. So so some of us some of us uh, uh, like to travel. Now, if you like to travel, don't hook up with somebody who's a homebody because you're going to be mad. If you're an outdoors person, maybe you like gardening or you like uh, the, doing grass and bushes and they like sitting up in the house and chilling. Now, you mad because y'all don't get along. You're saying, I need you to come outside. I need you to support me. I want you to look at these roses and I need you to put your hands in the dirt. I'm like, are you crazy? <laughs> it's hot out there. Anybody going out there with you all day? It's hot. And you're like, I know, but I want to be out there with the earth. And, 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 and you tell me, I know you better stop tracking all that earth in here. This is God's earth. <laughs> but you got to figure out what your style is. Amen, everybody. Are, are you, are you, I was going to say cheap. Are you frugal? <laughs> but you hook up with somebody who's a big spender? Y'all going to be fussing. Are, are you a reader? And sometimes... You want to be left alone. You, your book of Christian romance novels, <laughs> whatever you read, and they just want to talk. And you're like, would you shut up? I love you, but I'm trying to read. And, and see, maybe, maybe after work, that's how you come down. Right? So you got to pick someone who matches you at least a little bit in style. Do you love to go to the gym? Do you love to work out? And maybe they don't. Okay, well, that's not going to work a long term because they're going to end up talking about working out. They're going to talk about the book. They're going to talk about gardening with somebody else who likes what they like. So you got to figure out, you got to figure out what your flavor is going to be. Because whatever your flavor is going to be, it's important that you match your flavor or match your style. Say style. Now, we have a tendency to think that, uh, uh, that, that there are, and there are, don't get me wrong, some strict lines that you got to follow, but then there are also times when God gives you space. 
Now, it's not in his will or against his will to be an outdoors person. It's not in his will or outside of his will to be the person that likes to travel. It's not in his will or out of his will for someone to, to enjoy quiet time by themselves and reading. But you, it, it's going to be out of his will if you find someone who's out of his will. Because they don't understand where you play. Whether you're on this side, God still loves you. If you're only on the other side, God still loves you. But find someone who loves the same boundaries you do. Does that make sense, everybody? So your flavor matters, not the flavor of the month. Be authentic with who you are. Because you can't keep adjusting every time you fall in love with somebody. Because eventually you'll get lost and never figure out who you are. You got to be able to approach the situation saying, this is my style of love. This is my style of romance. This is my style of relationship. This is my style of dating. This is my style of being married. Amen, everybody. Amen. So you got to find your flavor. Say flavor. flavor. Then after you find your flavor, are y'all all right so far? Okay, okay. So after you find your flavor, you need some eggs. Now, when you're looking for eggs, the first thing I want you to do is check the grade. Do you want grade A or do you want a different grade? Not only check the grade, but open it up to make sure none of them are cracked. Because as I was researching and getting ready for this, I recognized that although the USDA uh, has these grades, they don't check like they used to. So you got to check for yourself to make sure you are with someone who's the right grade. Don't expect grade A uh, don't expect uh, grade A personality and grade A love from someone who's a lower grade. Don't be upset with them that they not, can't come, uh, uh, perform to your, to your level and, 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 you, and you downgraded who you love. If you expect grade A, find grade A. Amen, everybody. So, so now, now this is the crazy part, everyone. Uh, I, I, was, I was preparing for this and I, I just found out, I did not know this, I just found out that when eggs come out of a chicken, they're really brown. I was like, what? Because I didn't know the difference, brown eggs, white eggs, okay, whatever. When they come, all eggs, when they come out, they're actually originally brown. Didn't know that. I said, well, where did, where did these white eggs come from that I've been eating all this time? These white eggs, have been dyed. Now, y'all was laughing at me when I was talking about the big reveal. <laughs> but let me tell you something, and this is important, everybody. You want to find out what they really look like. Because, see, now this, this organic egg here has spots on it. Now, would you rather know about the real spots or find out that the back of this one is cracked? You want to find out that this has been dyed, but they hide it from you. Or would you rather find out who they really are so y'all can pray them through that thing? Yeah. Say amen, everybody. Yeah. So, so now, so now when, you, when you're looking at these eggs, this is, like, this is like investigating who you're dealing with. Don't hook up with anybody that you haven't taken the time to investigate. What do you mean, Pastor Show? Home of origin issues. Where did they come from? Tell me about your family. Are they crazy? Should I duck when we drive by the house? Is anybody looking for you? Like, give it all to me. Be because, because I have a right to know your grade. I also need to know your home of origin issues because if, if you were birthed from a chicken who uh, grew up with pesticides, and they were in a cage living in feces, you know that's inside this egg. If they were living in feces, it's inside the egg. If they were, if they were uh, uh, eating steroids, it's inside the egg. If, if they had pesticides to feed on, it's inside the egg. So, so what's inside of this egg is based on where its origin comes from. Now, it doesn't fully uh, and completely disqualify any of these eggs. It's just that I want to know. Oh, almost dropped it. I just want to know where it comes from. I don't want to crack the egg. I mean. So I need to know exactly where you come from because I need to be able to deal with your home of origin issues. Say amen to that. Because whatever your home brought to you is still in you. I love you, but I need to know what we got to pray against. So it gives you a better understanding when you know the home of origin. 
of all of your eggs. And you might decide, okay, I'm gonna go with the brown eggs, or you might just make the decision, you know what, I'm gonna go with these white eggs. This is one I want, not a problem, go for it. And you add that to your mixture. Y'all all right so far? So it doesn't matter in the long run how they were born because you must be born again. John 3 and 3. John 3 and 3 says, except a man be born again, you can't even see the kingdom. So make sure you're with someone. Now, they, they could have a whole lot of issues. They can have a lot of mess going with them because none of us are absolutely free of mess. None of us are free of everything. We got to make sure that these people that we're dealing with are born again. We got to make sure they love Jesus like you love him. Not just met him, but love him like you met him. I I'm talking to everybody in this room. Bless you, everybody in overflow. Make sure if you're looking at me in the lobby, make sure you date people. Find out if they saved before the first date. Amen. Everybody in overflow, give God some praise. Amen, <laughs> Amen everybody. Before you accept the first date, are you saved? Amen. Then we start talking about where, where, you, where you come from. You got to dwell with them. Okay, this is a great scripture. First Peter, first Peter three and seven. You got to dwell with them according to knowledge. It says, husband, you husbands in the same way, live with your wives in an understanding way. Live with them in an understanding way. Live with them according to knowledge. So if you're going to be with somebody, whether you choose uh, the white egg or the brown egg, organic, free range, whatever the case may be, you've done your investigation. You, you got to investigate so you can love them with an understanding. Here are the issues we're going to have to deal with. They had a crazy past. Uh, maybe, maybe they were raped. Maybe they were molested. Maybe they were abandoned. Maybe they never had a daddy. Maybe they never had a, a mommy, whatever the case may be. I need to know that. I need to dwell with them according to knowledge. As I do my investigation, I need to be able to say, okay, God, do you want me to be an instrument of getting them to you, closer to you? What, what do you want me to do with, with that God? What do, you, what do you want from me? What's my assignment here? You, you need to know that. What's my assignment in their life? If, for, for the women, if you're going to be a help meet, you got to know where you're supposed to help. Right? God, you got to give them a vision that they're supposed to help you with. Say amen. amen. Okay, so, so after you, after you, after you get these eggs together, uh, the next thing you're going to need, trust me now, you're going to need some oil. Amen. Amen. Now, uh, this oil represents the Spirit of God. Yes. This oil represents the Holy Ghost. Yes, now, you don't need the Holy Ghost to make it to heaven but you need them if you ain't gonna die tonight. If you gonna live to see tomorrow, you need him. Listen, let's be theologically sound. You don't need the Holy Ghost to make it to heaven. You need Jesus. But if you're gonna live a couple more days, it's the Holy Ghost that's gonna keep you. Would you stop hooking up with dry folk? up with people that ain't got no oil. Yeah. No oil, no anointing, no Holy Spirit. So the oil represents the anointing, it represents the Holy Spirit, and it represents prayer. Are you dealing with people who can't pray? Who gonna get a prayer through when you're having a bad, a bad day? Who's going to talk to God and get these things settled in the heavenlies if, if you can't? Listen, sometimes you got bad days. You need somebody else that's going to help you pray. If you're going to be here, you're going to help me pray. Make sure the Holy Spirit is with you to anoint you. You want the Holy Spirit to anoint your dating process. You want the Holy Spirit to anoint your marriage. You want the Holy Spirit to anoint you raising your kids because it, it can be a trip. All three can be a trip. And if you don't have the Holy Spirit dwelling on the inside of you and you live in a dry life, the oil starts to bring everything together now. Everything you do ought to be bathed in oil. Everything you do ought to be bathed in the anointing. Everything you do ought to be bathed in prayer. Don't, don't pick somebody who, who, who isn't bathed in prayer. Don't, don't pick somebody and you haven't prayed about them and ask God, is this the one for me? Have you really talked to God about that? Or were you so infatuated that if God was saying no, you couldn't hear him anyway? So we're mixing this together. We got to add oil. Matter of fact, James says, says it like this. James uh, chapter 5, 14. It says, if anyone among you is sick, then 
then he must call for the elders of the church and they will pray for him and anointing him with oil. You, you need to start and pre, you know, make sure that you do your premarital counseling with somebody who's saved. Amen. Don't, just, don't just do your counseling with any old body. Do, do your counseling with somebody who knows Jesus Amen. so they can give you biblical principles and they can anoint you and your, your future mate. They can anoint you and pray for you and speak life over you. You need to be, your, your relationship, your children need to be anointed. Are you anointing anything in your home? Are you laying hands on your spouse? Are you laying hands on your children? Are you anointing the house to tell the devil you can't live here no more? You need the oil of the anointing. You need prayer. You need the Holy Spirit for your family to stay together. Say amen to that, everybody. And so you're stirring it up, and, and then the next process of making the cake is the milk. Now, the milk represents moms. The milk represents uh, moms. Whenever there's a baby, or whenever there's anything in its infancy, there's a need for nourishment. Whenever there's anything in its infancy, there's a need for nourishment. There's a need for love. There's a need for milk as, as a substance uh, building blocks. When, when a baby's born, it's the mother's milk that keeps it alive. It's the nourishment. And, and Peter says this, 1 Peter 2 and 2, it says, uh, it says, like newborn babies desire the sincere milk of the word so they can grow. Newborn Christians need the sincere milk of the word so they can grow. I'm going to say that again. Newborn Christians need the sincere milk of the word so they can grow. A baby needs the milk from the mother so it can grow. Your relationships need to be nourished. The mom is like the milk. She brings the nourishment. Psychologists suggest that if the mom doesn't, people feel, people feel, like if your mom doesn't love you, no one will ever love you. Wow. Wow. Now that's not true, but that's what they believe based on all of the testimonies they receive, based on all the work that they do. If, if the mom is not there, if, if mom doesn't show love, it's hard, it's difficult for you to love somebody else because mom is the first one that ever loves you and supposed to love you absolutely unconditional. The love from the mother is basic. It's a foundation. It's a building block. The mother provides sensitivity. If, if there's no peace in the home, that's mama's fault. Because mothers are the bearers of peace. So, so whenever, whenever we go to a home and there's just no peace, I, I said, okay, mom, what's up? What are you doing? You, you have peace. You are anointed with peace. You are anointed with peace. Moms, if there's, if there's no sensitivity going on in the home, mom, what's happening? Because you are the bearer of that level of sensitivity that all the children are going to need. So, so the milk is, is like, in the, in the mixture of this cake, is like the mom. Y'all still with me? Okay, so, so in mixing, you, 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 you add wet with wet, and you, then you add dry with dry. So we're going to leave this for a second. So we're going to move on, and, and now we come to uh, uh, the baking powder. Now, the baking powder is small in quantity, but it packs a major punch. The baking powder is like the dad. When you put baking powder in the mix, it is the spark. It is the chemical reaction that makes the cake rise. Dads in the home makes the home rise. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Y'all ain't saying nothing. Every home by God's design should be a mom and a dad. That is God's design. I applaud all the single moms that do everything they can, but God's design is for there to be a mother and a father. I know you're doing the best you can, but you'll never be a dad. Pastor, I'm trying to be mom and dad. You'll never be mom and dad. Just be the best mom you can. And that's the Holy Spirit to come in because you trying to be mom and dad is going to stop you from being the best mom you could be because you're also trying to be something you're not genetically able to be. So dads are important. I know they want to tell you you don't need a man. They lying. You do. You needed a man to make that baby. So the family should have a mom and a dad. Now, now this baking powder, the dad challenges the family. He has that chemical reaction that makes the family get better. It makes the family rise. It challenges it because, because without that baking powder, after you finish everything, you just got a flat cake. 
But when you add the chemical reaction of the baking powder, which is the dad, the cake rises to the occasion. And it takes the shape of the vision you really wanted to see. The dad does that. We need strong fathers in the homes. We need strong fathers in the home. But, but, but. Fathers, Ephesians 6 and 4 says, now don't be mean, don't be nasty, don't provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. So you need the grace of God to teach you how to raise each of your children differently because each child requires something different. So fathers, you need to have the Holy Spirit helping you to know how to spark something great in each of your children and your wife. While she's bringing the nurture, you're, bring, you're, 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 you're allowing her to bring that nurture, but you're also that chemical reaction that challenges everything to make sure you're getting the most potential out of it. Yes, Are y'all still in here? Yes. So we do need dads in the home. We're not going to just settle for not having dads in the home. No, we do. We need some great men, if there's not a dad in the home, to be mentors to help these single moms raise these young men. Uh, sometimes the moms are struggling even with their sons, teaching their sons how to treat a woman. You need a man, a strong man, maybe one of the deacons in the church or, or mentoring programs uh, where they can get into that young man's head and say, this is how you even treat your mom. Yeah. Amen, everybody. Amen. So we got the baking powder. Y'all still with me? Y'all yeah. uh, not bored yet? Y'all good? Yeah. Okay, so we got the baking powder. And then the next thing we got to add is the all-purpose flour. Now, now, the largest ingredient in the entire cake is the flour. The largest ingredient in the entire cake is the flour. Let's call that faith. Let's call the flour faith. Okay, what, what, do, you, what do you mean, Pastor Show? Well, it depends on how much cake you want. That's how much flour you need. So, depending on what type of miracle you need, add the flour. Yes. If you try to make a small cake, you only need a little bit of faith. You try to make something big, you need a little more faith. Yes. Trying to feed your whole family, might lead them a little more faith. Yes. But if you follow my suggestion, add all the faith you got. Yes. Don't hold back nothing. So I don't know what's going to happen. I need as much faith as I can get just in case it go down the wrong way. Everybody will say amen to that. Amen. So you need this all-purpose faith yeah. that can help you through everything. Are you building a family without faith? Are you raising children without faith? I, I understand that, that because of a child's psychology, uh, you don't want to let them in on everything that's going wrong, but I don't think you ought to let, let them live their lives thinking that everything just comes on a silver platter either. I think every now and then when they saying, well, you know, the, the boy down the street, my friend down the street, his parents did it. I think you to tell them, listen, I ain't got their money. We're we going to do what we can do. Amen. I think there are times where you have to show them your faith. Well, I don't want them worried. I'm not saying worry them, but I need you to let them see you trust Jesus. So you're teaching them how to praise God. You're teaching them how God came. You know Jesus did this for us, right? You know I didn't have the money for this, but Jesus paid that bill. You, you, know, I didn't, you know I lost my job, but Jesus came in and let my resume go. Jesus did it. Holy Ghost, did God did that for us. It's important that you let them see the biggest component of your life. Hebrews 11 and 6 says, now, without faith, this all-purpose flour, the biggest ingredient, ingredient, it's impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must first believe that he is, and he's a rewarder of them who diligently, who diligently, most virgins say, diligently seek him. So depending on what size cake you want, that's how much flour you need. If you don't need a lot of faith, no big deal. But I think you ought to make sure you have as much faith as you need to do everything God's trying to cause you to do in your life. Say amen to that. So we got your baking powder, which is the father, and you got this all-purpose flour. And then the next thing you need, right after you, right after you put in the flour, is you need some salt. Uh, now, you don't, you don't need a whole lot, but it's the ingredient that enhances every other ingredient. So for some reason, this salt, when you put it in, 
it makes everything else come alive. So in the mixture, the salt, although small in amount, it makes everything else in here come alive. You, you are, Matthew 5 and 13 says, the salt of the earth. You, you are, your life is the salt. Your family, the one you're building right now, the one you're in right now, the one you're thinking about constructing right now is the salt of the earth. God wants to use your family in your community. He wants, you know what, maybe some of you in here, your family's supposed to be the first family of no divorce. Maybe everybody else in your family got divorced. Maybe everybody, you know, everybody else in your family is separated and God wants to use you as an example. Maybe, maybe God wants to use your family as a successful blended family. Maybe God wants to use you as a successful single who's saved. Whatever the case may be, you are the salt of the earth. Without this salt, everything is bland. It doesn't have any flavor. It doesn't have any taste. It doesn't have any pop to it. Now, in the Bible, salt, and even in our own lives, salt is, is used for three basic things. Uh, number one, salt is uh, something that preserves. Salt is something that preserves. Then the second thing is salt is something uh, uh, that adds flavor or if it adds taste. The last thing, especially in biblical times, salt was used for fires as a spark. Yes. Okay, so your family, your life is supposed to be the salt of the earth. You, you preserve the things that are good. Get rid of those things that are bad, but you preserve the things that are good. You, you are the taste. You are the flavor to an otherwise dead and bland life. And then in Bible days, if the fire was going down, they would throw salt on it to help it as a spark, a salt block to help the spark, to help the, the fire keep going. So you, your family is a spark in your street. Your family is a spark in your neighborhood. It's, it's what keeps the fire going. It preserves righteousness. It is the flavor, and it keeps the will of God spark, fire going, Holy Spirit moving through your family into other people's families. Say amen to that. So after you leave, after you get the, the, the father who's the baking powder and the flour and the salt, then you need to add some sugar. Now, now we think of the sugar as being the love of God, the grace of God, and the mercy of God. Now, now this is, is, is used based on your own personal taste because everybody's different. Maybe your family just needs a little bit of love because everybody's pretty good. But if you're, if you're getting ready to start a blended family or if you're in a blended family, maybe there needs to be a little more mercy yeah, yeah. because everybody's coming together now. Or maybe, maybe there was some infidelity and God is causing y'all to forgive and you're trying to get your family together and there needs to be some more grace and some more mercy and some more love. And, and it's just like, okay, we, we got to keep applying it. And then you kind of you got to make sure that, that your family is becoming everything that it needs to become. So that salt, that sweet flavor is like, is like the mercy of God that we all need. It's like the grace of God that we all need. It's like the love of God that we all need. Matter of fact, uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, uh, we call it the love chapter. In the Bible, you see the word charity, that means love. It says that love never fails. Love doesn't keep a record of wrong. Love uh, love doesn't, doesn't allow us to go back and remind people of all the things they did to hurt us. No, love, was, love is what forgives and it doesn't fail us when we, put, when we apply it to our lives. So you might have to add some more grace. Every now and then you might have to add some more mercy. How about this? More mercy than you want to. More grace than is comfortable. More love than you think they deserve. Because the same amount of grace and mercy you're trying to apply to them, you might need one day in your life too. So if you're trying to make a family, and remember, you got to raise all of your children according to who they are. You got to apply mercy to the point that they need it. You got to apply grace to the point that they need it. You got to apply love to the point that they need it. Maybe your spouse is having a rough season in life. Maybe they got laid off of work and they need some more grace. I am looking for a job, but nobody's hiring right now. I need some more grace. Maybe I did do something wrong. I need some mercy. Maybe I'm, I, I'm depressed right now. I need some love. Don't, don't be the one that withholds what they need. Because you'll end up making a cake that you don't want to eat. Are you raising kids you don't like? Why raise children you don't like? Why, why raise up a family you don't like? Why pick a spouse that you don't like? No, you need to add the sugar. You need to add everything, the grace and the love that makes this into what you desire it to be. And so then now after you have your wets separate and you have your dries, 
Now, mixture matters. Right. Mixture matters. Why, Pastor Show? Because everything don't mix. Just because you want it to mix, don't make it mix. Just because you think it applies, doesn't mean it applies. Just because you think it ought to work, doesn't mean it. Just because it worked for the last person you was with, don't mean it worked for this person. Just because it worked for the older child, doesn't mean it works for the younger child. Order matters and mixture matters. So as we apply the wet to the dry and we're mixing it, you got to realize at some point it's going to get arduous. At some point, you're going to have to bear everything down and put some work in. You're going to have to stir it, hear me, until it gains the consistency you desire. You, got to, you have to love that hard-headed boy until he gains the consistency you desire. You're going to have to love that little smart mouth girl. <laughs> Don't pop her in the mouth just yet. Until she gains the consistency you desire. But there are going to be some lumps. Don't you dare stop mixing. Don't you dare stop putting work in just because it gets thick in the room sometimes. Don't you dare give up. That's your child. That's your spouse. That's who you said God. You said God had these children. You said God be with that person. Don't you, don't you stop until it gains the consistency you need. And it's going to get tough sometimes. And it's going to get arduous sometimes. But you got a vision of what this family ought to be. And you've already got all the ingredients. Now it's time to put in the work because mixture matters. You can't, keep, you can't skip this step because it gets tiring. And I know you told them before. You might have to tell them again. And I know you said it before, but you got to say it again. Pastor Show, you just don't understand. I understand that you set out this, you set out on this journey of your own free will. Nobody made you do anything, and this is your decision, so now you got to put some work in. If, you, if you're saying that's who God called you to marry, you got to put some work in. If you, if you had them children, that's, that's what you got to work with. Yeah. Amen, everybody. Yeah. So the order matters. God made this earth in order. He didn't just throw everything out there. He did it to make sure that no matter who came to, no, no matter how, how many people were born, that we would have what we needed to survive on this earth. God did this earth in order to make sure that we could live. Why do you think your life can be out of order? Why do you think your family can survive out of order? There's an order that God has for your family. There's a, there's a mixture that he put in there, and you're the one that's supposed to be creating this. Make sure you're creating it based on what you believe God is saying. And then after you get the consistency you want, after, after everything is the way you want it to be, and you got the batter already made, okay, everything is perfect, but this ain't the cake. This, this right here, this is amazing, but this, this is not the cake. It's not going to be what you want it to be until you let God apply heat. Now, you can avoid the heat all you want. You won't have a cake. You can avoid trials and tribulations all you want, but you won't have what you're looking for. God says you're going to have to let him turn this oven on. And you're going to have to make a decision now. Now, now after you get your batter together, you got to figure out if you're going to make cupcakes, you're going to make a bunt cake, whatever it's going to be, that's your choice. Whatever you want it to be, that's your choice. It's, it's your playing field. It, God's pleased with either one of them, but whatever it is, you got to stick with it. Yeah, yeah. And then you pour your batter into your, into, your, into, into, your, into, your, into your cases here, and then you put them in your oven. Now, listen to me. Listen to me. Don't be like me when co-pastor's baking. Every five minutes, I walk by. And when nobody looking, now here's the problem. It's designed to be in the heat for a certain amount of time. But every time I mess with it, every time I mess with it, every time I meddle, I lose heat. Now it's got to stay in there longer. So I'm looking at it, and I'm saying, man, that looked done. I smell it. It looked done to me. We got the oven with the light come on. <laughs> so I push the button, and I'm looking at it like my eyes going to help it. 
I'm looking. I'm look, now, co is someplace else. And I'm trying to feel like, I'm trying to figure out why she ain't checking on the cake. But, but she knows how much time it needs. So I'm saying, babe, it's ready. It's not ready yet. You ain't even looking. You ain't even came away to see what's going on. I'm looking at the cake, and now I'm like, it ain't ready. I can open it again. What you mean it ain't ready? <laughs> then when she finally comes down to check on the cake, I've made it take longer. Because wow. yeah. I keep meddling in the cake process. Yeah. If I want it to be great, I got to let it stay in the heat. If you're feeling like the enemy's putting heat on your situation, it means you're almost ready to come out. Don't you dare stop the process when you are this close to a great family. Don't you dare stop the process and try to get up out the heat. The heat is what's making you great. Heat produces greatness. Heat produces miracles. So you're asking God for it, but you can't get it without the oven. So eventually, eventually, oh, I'm out of time. Eventually, y'all, give me, give, me, give me two more minutes, and I'll be done. Give me two more minutes. Uh, eventually, eventually, the cake is ready. And I have the privilege of opening it up. Put my mittens on. <laughs> it's hot. <laughs> I have the privilege of pulling out perfection. And so all my blood, sweat, and tears produces an incredible cake. Everything I wanted, all the work I put in, you, you're supposed to produce an incredible family. But you got to put the work in you got to let it go through the heat moments of life and stay in there until it, it's everything God promised you it would be. So here is your perfect family. The only thing you could do now, once you get it out the pan and it looks absolutely amazing, before you serve it, before you let anybody close to it, you take the blood of Jesus yeah. and you glaze that bad boy because your family's not complete without his blood. See, you're trying to build a family bloodless. What can wash away? All of my sins. See, without this, you might have a dry cake. It might be, see, you got to inspect it now. Oh, there's some spots that didn't get his blood. My child's education needs his blood. My health care needs his blood. How many know your family needs to be drenched in the blood? How many, don't, don't play with me now, don't play with me. How many recognize that your family won't survive if you don't drown it in the blood? Your children won't make it through school if you don't drown it in the blood. Your relationships won't make it if you don't drown it in the blood. We need the blood of Jesus to cover our families. We need the blood of Jesus to cover our dating. Amen, somebody. We need the blood of Jesus to even choose the right person. Don't you let all that work in making a great family go to waste because you don't cover it in his blood. We need the redeeming power of the blood of Jesus on our families. And so no matter who you are in this room, no matter where you are in your relationships, whether you are unmarried and seeking a spouse or unmarried and you're settled, if you are married and having marital trouble or even living in marital bliss, we need his blood. And there's some tweaks along the way that we need to go through to enhance and make sure that we're building a great family. I put this message, thank, thank you Holy Ghost, together because I don't want us to take for granted that making a great family is easy. But here at Half Life Church, I want us to have great families. 